The following paid program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Catherine Ruinala Ministries. Coming up on Catherine Ruinala. And if you go to him and you say, what should I do now? The Lord will show you what to do at the moment that you need to do it. He will give you wisdom in the situation. Hallelujah. And so we need to recognize when he gives a rhema word to pick it up and to use it as the sword of the spirit, which is the rhema of God, the word of God. Amen. There is nothing that the Lord can't do. God wants us to dream big dreams because Christ in you wants to touch the world around you. This isn't my doing. This isn't something I've earned. It's the goodness of God. It's the grace of God. And I believe that I am now anointed and qualified, not because I've earned it, not because of what I've done, but because of what Jesus has done. Today with Catherine Ruinala. The Holy Spirit wants to encourage you at every turn and at every moment. And I want to talk some more today about hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. We were talking about the Logos and the Rhema on Friday, but I want to talk more about hearing His voice. But He wants to speak to you every day. He has daily bread for you every day. He's got encouragement for you every day. Hallelujah. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every rhema that proceeds from the mouth of God. And He wants to encourage you in your every situation. As I was feeling a little discouraged, I was thinking about and turned to a passage in Isaiah where it's talking about the story of Hezekiah and when the Assyrians were assailing uh, Israel and Rabshakeh comes along and he's, he's a professional intimidator. He's sent by the Assyrians to professionally intimidate. That's his job is to bring fear in order to make the assault easier. And they'd say, can you just speak to us in Aramaic? And he'd go, no, I'm going to speak in Hebrew because I want them all to hear it. And you know, he knew how exactly how to intimidate them, how to discourage, how to try and take courage out of them. And you see it happen. It's a constant theme as anyone is trying to do something for the Lord. Nehemiah was rebuilding the wall and... So people came along to try to discourage him. They'd say, you have to come and talk to us. And they'd threaten him. I've heard a rumor you're going to try and make yourself king. We're going to tell the king. You need to come down and talk to us about that. Explain yourself. My pastor used to tell me, never explain. Your friends don't need an explanation and your enemies will never accept one. But really, he was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not coming down. I'm doing a great work. I cannot come down because he knew that they weren't trying to help him. They weren't, it wasn't going to help him getting down there trying to justify himself. He had a mission. He had a work to do. And I just want to encourage you as the Holy Spirit uh, speaks to you, know that he will speak to you through stories, the word of God, things that um, you read about. God wants it to apply to your life. He wants you to take heart. I was encouraged through the prophetic summit as all the preachers saying, take heart, dear one, because it's the heart of God. Take heart, be encouraged, be of good cheer. God is for you. Who can be against you? It's a year for courage, hallelujah. And we can encourage ourselves when the enemy comes to discourage us by simply putting in courage. Encourage is actually means to put in courage and you can put in courage by feeding on the promises of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And then I've been doing my, uh, at, at the moment I'm, I'm working my way through Proverbs. Oh my, it's so good. There is so much wisdom in this book. Uh, I'm reading it. It's got information. It's got wisdom about your mouth. Oh Lord. Help us listen uh, where there's many words, sin or not is not absent. Oh God, help us with the mouth. Help us, Lord, that, uh, that the, a man shall eat the fruit of his lips. There's so much wisdom about marriage and relationships. You know, it, tells, tells the, it speaks to the women 
and it says things, better to live in a de desert land with a contentious, than with a contentious wom and vexing woman. <laughs> or, um, or on the corner of a house, or if, you, if you're being contentious, living with a contentious woman is like living with a dripping tap. That's actually in the book of Proverbs. But then it gives the man a really good go too. And it helps you have some wisdom about how to be wonderful as well. And uh, we'll say things like, um, don't be lazy. You be lazy, you be poor. He says things like, don't give yourself to, to getting drunk because wine's a mocker and you'll make a fool of yourself. Says things like, don't be angry and don't associate with angry people. Walk with the wise and you'll become wise. The companion of fools suffers harm. There's just so much wonderful, good wisdom in here. If we can learn what it looks like, there's wisdom about how to, talk, how to speak and how to interact with people. Um, it says here in Proverbs 20, he who goes about as a slanderer reveals secrets. Therefore, don't associate with a gossip. Don't be a tale bearer. If you come about thinking you're going to win favor by telling tales about other people, the reality is people are only going to be more suspicious of you knowing that if you're telling tales about somebody else, you're probably going to tell tales about them too. There's wisdom. Mind your own business wisdom. It's in there too. Mind your own business. Actually says it. And, you know, as we look at the Word of God, as we listen to what He says here, ah, He'll show you how to live a healthy, blessed, and prosperous life. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. It's true. So much good stuff in here. I could just go on and on. He's so much wisdom about finance and how to be financially prosperous. So much wisdom here. Um, in, in all aspects of life, he's able to address it. So I want to encourage you, whatever book of the Bible you're in at the moment, when you read it, know that the Holy Spirit wants to give you something personally to help you today. Every day, he's got something that's not just interesting, but something that want, he wants to use to help you, equip you, and to minister to you, to comfort you and to encourage you. Amen? Amen. If you turn with me to Acts chapter 8, we're going to have a look here. I was sharing from this the other night. Amazing story. And if you haven't heard um, my message on uh, the Rhema Word of God, I encourage you to go back and have a listen but it says here in chapter 8, we're reading about Philip, Philip the evangelist. This isn't Philip the apostle, Philip the evangelist, one of the deacons uh, that was appointed to, to help sort out the situations with the widows and who gets what. Praise the Lord. Anyway, after Stephen was martyred, everyone was scattered. He went to Samaria, preached the gospel, people got saved. An angel spoke to him, said, go to this place. So he goes to this place, sees a chariot coming past with an Ethiopian eunuch. Verse 29, then the spirit said to Philip, go up and join this chariot. Say spirit. spirit. The spirit said to Philip, go up and join this chariot. You know, the Holy Spirit wants to give you direction to be in the right place at the right time. Hallelujah. Little promptings. Just, you should ring this person, or I really feel like to pray for this person, or I feel, like I, should, I feel like I should do this. Let the Holy Spirit lead you because He has good works laid up in advance for you and I to do. Amen? So Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, Well, how could I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now, the passage of Scripture which he was reading um, was this. He was led as a sheep to slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he doesn't open his mouth. In humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who will relate his generation, for his life is removed from the earth? The eunuch answered Philip and said, Please tell me of whom does this prophet say this, of himself or of someone else? 
Then Philip, from the scripture he preached, from this scripture, he preached Jesus to him. I just love that. He preached Jesus. We need to be preaching Jesus, not any other message, not any other agenda. We preach Jesus. Our mission, preach Jesus. Hallelujah. He preached Jesus to him. And as, he, as they went along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, what prevents me from being baptized? He was baptized. After he was baptized, Philip gets taken in the spirit, just boop, disappears and gets taken to another place. It's a very cool story. Hallelujah. It's in the New Testament. And the Holy Spirit is the one who orchestrated all of it. But what I want to really pull out today is I want you to think about this. Philip has been told by God, he's been instructed by the Holy Spirit uh, to come to this place. And then he recognizes the, the chariot and the Holy Spirit prompts him, go and stand up and go beside the chariot. So he does that and he hears the eunuch reading. He hasn't had any opportunity to prep a message or an explanation. But as he gets up into the chariot, he recognizes the opportunity and the setup that the Holy Spirit has given. Right there, he's reading a messianic prophecy. And here I am, I know, God has set me up. And he gave him what he needed to say. It says here, Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning from this scripture, he preached Jesus to him. He knew, okay, if God's given me the opportunity, he'll also give me what I need for this opportunity. Every time the Holy Spirit gives you an opportunity, you can have faith. He will give you what you need in that moment. I remember when I was first learning to prophesy, I'd, I'd come along and I'd do the little PS. So the prophet would prophesy and I'd come alongside and I'd give the little PS afterwards. Like, and... I also feel like this. And that was great. I was quite comfortable doing that for two weeks. And then all of a sudden, I'm ready with my PS. And they say, no, 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 you pray for this one now. And then this one and this one. I'm like, ah, oh, but ah, uh, uh, I don't have anything for that one. I'm just, ah, uh, uh. And I had to remind myself, if God gives me an opportunity, he gives me what I need to glorify him in that opportunity. So this isn't about what I can do. This is about the Holy Spirit has given this opportunity. He will give what I need in that opportunity. That is something I ha that has helped me throughout my entire ministry. Every time I get an opportunity, instead of thinking, oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I remind myself, thank you, Lord. Every time you give me an opportunity, you will also give me what I need to glorify you in this opportunity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Have a look at Matthew chapter 10. It says this in verse 18. Jesus speaking, and you will even be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they hand you over, don't worry about how or what you are to say, for it will be given you in that hour what you are to say. For it's not you who speak, but it's the Spirit of the Father who speaks in you. Hallelujah. In other words, he's saying, if you get thrust into a situation where you get to stand before kings or governors or rulers or uh, you get an opportunity to give an answer as to why you believe what you believe. Someone says, tell me about this getting saved business as they are doing more and more and more. You can have confidence that as the Holy Spirit has opened up the opportunity, he will also give you the words as you open your mouth. He'll give you what you need in that moment to glorify him in that opportunity. Amen? Amen. 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 You can have faith in that because if your faith is in yourself, when an opportunity comes, you are likely to miss out. This happened with the Israelites. God gave them an opportunity. He promised them 
the, the promised land. And so they sent the spies in and they came back going, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, but we couldn't possibly. It, the giants in the land, we could, we're like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in theirs. And instead of realizing that God was giving an opportunity and having faith in the reality that God will give them what they need in that opportunity, they put their faith in their own ability and they measured it and went, no, nah, we can't do it. Now God's going to be opening some doors this year. Isaiah 22, 22, the key of David, loving him as you give yourself to loving him. The, the scripture says that I will open doors no man can shut. And as he opens these doors, you need to be very careful that your focus is not on yourself and your ability. Because if you do, then you'll go, great door, but I'm just not up to it. Great door, but oh, look, I've got these circumstances. I'm feeling this level of stress. I couldn't possibly take on another thing. Great door, but yeah, not a good timing. I don't feel I've got capacity. When actually the often the Holy Spirit will be opening a door and waiting for you to say, Lord, thank you. You've opened that door and you will give me what I need as I step in. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you'll provide what I need for that opportunity. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, we're called to walk by faith. Faith is in the character of God who promises that when, when I open a door, no man can shut it. I'm doing this for you, but he's waiting for you to open your mouth. He's waiting for you to recognize he'll give you what you need in whatever situation he puts you in. Amen? Amen. John 14, if you want to turn there. Hallelujah. John 14, 25. These things I've spoken to you while abiding with you, but the, the helper, say the helper. the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Who's ever had the Holy Spirit bring a scripture to your remembrance? The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack. Yes, God. Father, I thank you. You are the one that makes a way where there seems to be no way. Whatever situation you are in, the Holy Spirit is ready to help you if you will just look to him for the help that he's there to give. Amen. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Don't let it be discouraged. Don't let your courage be stolen. Don't let the enemy frighten you. Don't let the enemy intimidate you. That is his job. They had professional intimidators in the days back in the Old Testament when the Assyrians were assailing Israel. Professionals to intimidate and frighten. It's part of the psychological warfare that goes on and has gone on uh, throughout the ages. But the enemy still does it. He's there to assail you, to discourage you, to frighten you, to discourage you, to, to shout at you, to wear you down, to make you believe it's impossible, it's impossible. But the Holy Spirit wants to bring to your remembrance, all things are possible for them who believe. The Holy Spirit wants to bring to your remembrance that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Hallelujah. That God wants to remind you that you are not on your own. That you're not called to be discouraged. He wants to encourage you. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. We're scoop it, scooting all over the place today, but hallelujah. Who enjoys the book of Ephesians? Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6. We know this, the armor of God, 
most of you will know that about putting on the, the full armor of God. What it is, is a reminder there is everything you need for every day, but you have a role to play. A banqueting table has been laid in front of you. It's got everything you need, all the tools, all the things, everything you need is there. But if you don't get up and get it, if you don't actively lay hold of it and use it, then you miss out. God wants you to be somebody that doesn't live by your own strength, but recognizes all the incredible gifts and tools, the things that the Lord has given you so that you can be fruitful in every good work. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6 here, it says here in verse 17, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I shared the other night that uh, throughout the New Testament in the Greek, the word is often translated logos, and it's also often translated rhema, but they have two different meanings. The logos being Jesus, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus is the logos, the written word of God. This is the logos, this is what we read, oh, it's awesome. And then he also speaks about the rhema, which is the spoken word of God. The Holy Spirit spoke to uh, Simeon. He, uh, Peter would say, well, we've toiled all night, but at your word, I'll do it. I'll let the nets down. That word there is rhema, at your spoken word. And the Lord wants you to recognize that here in Ephesians 6, take the sword of the spirit, which is the rhema, the word, the rhema word of God, when God highlights something to you from his word, when it's personally applicable, when you read it and you go, oh, that's so relevant for my situation right now, recognize it is a rhema word of God. It is a now word that the Lord is speaking to you so that you can pick it up and use it as a weapon. So as I'm having my sort of discouragement, and feeling a bit discouraged, and I hear the song, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and bring me safety to his heavenly kingdom. I'm reminded, oh yes, that's a scripture. Oh yes, that's nice. I could say, that's nice, God, thank you. Yeah, that's nice, I'm glad. That's encouraging. <laughs> or I can recognize that the Lord is dangling in front of me, the sword, Catherine, pick it up. Oh. Sometimes with a rhema word from God, when God reminds you of the scripture, when the Holy Spirit reminds you of something Jesus said, you can go, yeah, that's nice. Thanks, God. I recognize that. That's lovely. And leave it there. And actually not get the point of the fact that he gave it to you to do something with it. When you get a rhema word, when you hear some encouragement, when you hear a message preached that you go, oh, that was for me, don't just say, that was good, that was for me. Pick it up and do something with it. So when I'm hearing him say, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom, rather than just taking it as a nice encouragement, thank you, God, I needed those words, that's nice, thank you for the cuddle. I need to recognize it's mine to pull out and go, the Lord says he is rescuing me from this evil attack, attack. I have nothing to fear. God is for me. Who can be against me? And the Holy Spirit will give me the words as I begin to go to war with the rhema, the sword of the spirit, and watch and see the tide of battle turn. You see, the rabshakers and the intimidators, they are expecting you to go, oh, it's terrible. Oh, it's terrible. We surrender. We give up. I mean, it's fascinating as you read their proposal. You got no hope, might as well give up. Come with us, we'll take you into another place. You'll be, just come with us better than dying. So just let us take you into captivity because nobody's ever been able to succeed against us. It's like, are you serious? We'll probably only kill about half of your men if you come with us now. You know, like, not great options. The enemy's desire to intimidate you into giving up 
is never for your good. When he comes and goes, wouldn't it be good if you could just get the, the virus right now? Then, uh, then you wouldn't have to face that situation at work. Oh, isn't it terrible? You just need to like, just lie down and, and give up. Don't, don't, don't. Why do you keep doing this to yourself? Just give up. And the Lord, he wants to speak to you the wisdom of God. He wants to show you. And if you go to him and you say, what should I do now? The Lord will show you what to do at the moment that you need to do it. He will give you wisdom in the situation. Hallelujah. And so we need to recognize when he gives a rhema word to pick it up and to use it as the sword of the spirit, which is the rhema of God, the word of God. Amen. Every day, God has a word for you. But I believe that if we're going to be really effective and fruitful, we need to wake up and recognize it beyond just a nice word from God. But to recognize that you and I have been given the strength to bend a bow of bronze, that you and I have been given the capacity to scale a wall. You and I have been given by His Spirit the power to do the impossible. For nothing is impossible for those who believe. Hallelujah. Do you need a miracle in your life? Nothing is impossible for those who believe. If you need healing in your body right now, I want you to put your hand on the part of your body that needs healing and I'm going to pray for you right now. There is no distance in prayer. Holy Spirit, I pray right now that you touch them, heal them, deliver them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak healing, breakthrough, deliverance, wholeness now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed. Thank you, Father. We'd love you to write to us and tell us what the Lord's done in your life. We love to hear your testimonies. So please write and tell us what God's doing for you. I want to invite you to become a monthly partner. We so appreciate all our monthly partners helping us get the Word of God out around the world. Let me tell you about some of the benefits of our monthly partnership. Firstly, you'll have full access to my regular live mentoring sessions, which are always really special. Every month I teach for a short time, and then we'll have a question and answer time where you can ask about anything that's in your heart. Let me help you unlock the supernatural calling in your life. As a partner, I'll commit to praying for you regularly, and I'll add your photo to my prayer wall so that I can pray for you specifically. I love to see your face. You'll also be added to our database so that you can receive our newsletter filled with encouragement. Please visit our website or contact our call center to become a monthly partner today. I so appreciate everyone who is helping us get the Word of God around the world. The preceding paid program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Catherine Ruinala Ministries.